Welcome to the class on E540 Advanced Electromagnetic Theory and Antennas. I am Professor Rakesh Singh Shetramayam. So in this class, we will discuss the application of Film Equivalence Principle 2 and Method of Images. In the application 1, we will consider a very complicated electromagnetic problem and apply field equivalence principle to and matter of images and simplify the problem to a great extent. So what is the complex electromagnetic problem we are going to consider? You consider there is a free space, infinite free space. Then you put a infinite PEC surface, perfect electric conducting surface. So now, when I place this PEC surface, I will divide this infinite free space into two parts. Left half space and right half space. And after that, I put sources, electric current density and magnetic current density. So if they are time bearing, it will start radiating fields everywhere in space. But the fields which are radiated from the left half space sources won't be able to reach the fields in the won't be able to reach the right half space because of the PEC surface. What do we do? We actually cut a slot in the PEC surface, then in that case fields which are radiated from J and M in the left half space should be able to reach the right half space. So we'll have fields, electric field and magnetic field in the right half space. We are actually interested in finding this electric field and magnetic field in the right half space due to sources in J and M in the left half space. So this is a very complicated problem. We'll simplify it using field equivalence principle 2 and method of images. Let us apply field equivalence principle 2 first. So what do we have? We have a PEC surface with a slot. So in the field equivalence principle 2, we actually fill the region 1 with PEC conductors with infinite conductivities. Similar to that, here the slot will fill with PEC. So we don't have any slots here and in order to satisfy the boundary condition of the original problem we need to introduce mantic current density at the slot and that mantic current density can be calculated from the tensile component of the electric field E cross N and this source mantic current density should be the source for electric field and mantic field in the right half space so in order to find fields in the right half space, I just need to worry about the magnetic current density E cross N. This is an equivalent problem by applying field equivalence principle 2. Let us further simplify this by using the matter of images. So calculating fields in the presence of PEC surface is a very difficult task. So we have a cure for that by using the matter of images. In the matter of images, what do we do? We actually remove this PEC surface. This dashed line represents the location of the PEC. We have removed it. So we have removed it. If we remove the PEC surface, we need to introduce some image current density so that the boundary condition of the PEC surface at this location of the original problem should be preserved. From the original problem, we have magnetic current density ms, which is equal to E cross n. What is the distance of this ms from the interface, which is shown by dash line? This distance is 0. d is 0. Distance of the ms from the interface d is 0. But then, we have just displaced it so that I can also show the image current properly. So, image current, magnetic current density will be in the same direction. 
at the same location and distance from the interface should also be same and in this case d is 0. Amplitude of this image, magnetic current density will also be the same as that of the original image, uh, original magnetic current density. So now what we are having is two magnetic current density of same amplitude and in the same direction at the same location. So equivalently using this uh, equivalent problem I can find the fields in the right half plane E and I in the right half plane. So now since the magnetic current density both of them are in the same direction and are having the same amplitude at the same location we can simply sum them up. So equivalently we are basically having a magnetic current density ms which can be calculated as 2e cross n and using this magnetic current density I can find the fields everywhere in the right half space. So this is a much simplified electromagnetic problem by application of field equivalence principle 2 and method of images. So here we will apply field equivalence principle 1 and simplify a electromagnetic problem. We consider magnetic current density and electric current density which was existing somewhere in free space. So now if J and M are time bearing it will start radiating fields in the free space, everywhere in free space. Assume an imaginary boundary surface and because of this imaginary boundary surface, free space will be divided into two parts, left half space and right half space. So now we are interested in finding fields only in the right half space because of the source in the left half space. J and M are source in the left half space. I want to find the fields E H in the right half space. This is the problem we are considering. So for this problem, we can find an equivalent problem. And uh, please note that N is the normal to the interface. So we want to apply field equivalent principle 1 and find an equivalent problem. So this is the imaginary infinite boundary surface you have here and we can assume that the sources in the left half space has been deleted in that case you will have zero field in the left half space just like that of field equivalence principle so now but in the right half space I have electrical and magnetic field so there is a discontinuity at the imaginary boundary surface so in order to satisfy the boundary condition I need to introduce a equivalent an equivalent electric current density which can be calculated from the tensile component of the magnetic field n cross s I also need to introduce a, an equivalent magnetic current density ms this can be calculated from the tensile component of the electric field E cross N. So now this equivalent electric current density and magnetic current density is sufficient for me to find fields everywhere in the right half space. So this is the application to our field equivalence principle. But we have one more theorem to be discussed for the electromagnetic theorems and concepts. This is the last theorem we will be considering. This is called reciprocity. So what does reciprocity mean? Basically it means that in the electromagnetic field theory, when you interchange the field and the source, the system performance remains the same. So when you interchange the field and source in an EM problem, it could be an EM problem or in an experimental setup, the system performance remains the same. So when you interchange field and source in any kind of electromagnetic problem or experimental setup, the response of the system doesn't get affected. So this is what reciprocity means, basically means, but we try to understand it by applying it in context of antennas. What does reciprocity mean in context of antennas? We'll find it. In order to understand that, we'll consider two antennas, antenna A and antenna B. And we'll consider two cases, case 1 and case 2. In the case 1, I actually apply EMF at the terminals of antenna A. 
we are giving source to antenna. Antenna is a passive device and then unless you give some kind of source to the antenna it will not start radiating. So now when you supply EMF to the antenna A it will start radiating. So somewhere in the space we have another antenna B and because of this radiated field from antenna A, antenna B will get some incident electric field and that electric field will actually excite some current on the antenna B. So we measure that current. Source is applied to antenna A, we are measuring current at antenna B. Case 2, just the opposite. I apply the same EMF to antenna B and now I measure the current induced in antenna A. So now let us call this current in the case 1 as current 1 and current in the second case as case current 2. So now from the reciprocity theorem, this current in case 1 and current in case 2, current 1 and current 2 should be equal. So that is the reciprocity application in terms of antennas. So in the next slide, we will picturally see what does this means. Just before that, in order to satisfy this reciprocity theorem for the antennas, we need to have some kind of assumptions here. We made some assumptions here. What was the first assumption? First assumption is basically the EMF we are applying for the antenna A and antenna B would be of same frequency. If they are at different frequency, reciprocity theorem will not work for antennas. Then second assumption is we need to worry about the medium where your fields were propagating. So the medium should be linear. If it is non-linear, it doesn't work. It should be isotropic. If it is anisotropic, it also doesn't work. And the region should be passive. There should not be any active devices in the region. So EMF should be of same frequency, medium should be linear, isotropic and passive. So these are the conditions we need to be satisfied in order that reciprocity theorem for antennas works. We can also picturally uh, describe this reciprocity theorem for antennas. So let's discuss it properly. Let's say you have an antenna A. Antenna is a passive device. On its own, it will not start radiating fields. You need to give some source. It could be microwave source, RF source, or you can say it's an EMF you are supplying to the antenna. Once you supply that to the antenna, it will start radiating fields everywhere in space. You will have EM waves everywhere. So somewhere in space, we have an antenna B. So this antenna B will pick up these EM waves from the antenna A. And because of this incident fields, there will be some current induced in antenna B. So that current can be measured with an emitter A. In this is the first setup of experiment. In the second setup of experiment, we have antenna B. So it's a passive device. You give some EMF, microwave source, RF source to this antenna. This antenna will start radiating fields everywhere in space. We will have EM waves everywhere. Somewhere in the space, you have antenna A. This field will be incident on antenna A because of that current will be induced in antenna A. We can measure that current with antenna A uh, with an emitter. So the current we measure in the first set of and second set of, they will be equal. So this is what reciprocity theorem tells for antenna. We can also explain this reciprocity theorem in terms of circuit theory from the circuit theory point of view. So in order to do that, we need to understand what is a two-port network and its T equivalent circuit representation. So two-port network, as the name suggests, will have two ports. Port 1, we usually call it as input port and port 2, which we usually call as output port. And Z is the device which will have a matrix representation in the form of Z. It can be in terms of scattering matrix, it can be in terms of Y matrix, Z matrix is the impedance matrix and this is what we are interested as on now. So now port 1 and port 2, what is the port? Port is the place where you connect the device to the outside world. So we are considering two port network with input port and output port and we are considering Z matrix representation of that device. 
So from there, I can find the T-equivalent circuit representation. Why do we call it T-equivalent circuit representation will be clearly understood from the next discussion. We are finding a equivalent circuit of this two port device. It will have a series arm, series arm of impedance Z11 minus Z12 and another series arm of Z22 minus Z12. We'll also have a sun arm which is of Z12. So what does, what does this look like? This looks like a T. That's why it's called a T equivalent network. We'll also specify the voltage at port 1 as D1, voltage at port 2 as B2 and current entering the port 1 as I1 current which is entering the port 2 as I2. So this is a T equivalent circuit representation of a two port network. We will use this and discuss reciprocity theorem from the circuit theory point of view. <coughs> so let's consider a two port network and we call the port 1 input port as excitation port and port 2 which is output port as measurement terminal. We have port 1 and port 2. Port 1 is excitation port, port 2 is the measurement terminal. So now, what is the relation between voltage and current of this two port network? We have already specified voltage and current for a two port network. What is the relation? The matrix relation is simply V is equal to Zi. And you can even write it in a component wise form B1, B2 is equal to Z11, Z12, Z21, Z22, I1, I2. B1 and B2 are the voltage in port 1 and port 2. I1 and I2 is the current entering in port 1 and port 2. Z11, Z12, Z21, Z22 is the impedance matrix, impedance matrix of the two port network. You can even have port wise relation. If I want to find voltage V1 at port 1, I can simply find as V1 is equal to Z11 I1 plus Z12 I2. In the port 2, I can also find voltage as V2 as Z21 I1 plus Z22 I2. We'll use this relation for finding the reciprocity theorem in the next slide. So, what we are interested in is we are interested in measuring the short circuit current I2 at port 2 in the output port by applying a voltage B1 at port 1. What do I mean by short circuiting port 2? That means B2 is 0. So I want to find the ratio of B1 by I2 when B2 is 0. And from the previous relation you have from relation between B is equal to Zi, you can easily derive it and turns out to be Z12, Z21 minus Z11, Z22 divided by Z21. I will call this as equation 1. Similarly, I can also measure short circuit current I1 at port 1 by applying a voltage B2 at port 2. And I can find out the ratio of B2 by I1 since I am measuring the source circuit current I1 at port 1, B1 should be 0. So I want to find B2 by I1 when B1 is 0. I can easily derive from the matrix relation we have in the previous slide and turns out to be Z12, Z21 minus Z11, Z22 divided by Z12. This is the equation 2. I will call this as equation 2. So, from the reciprocity theorem, when I interchange the source and observation, source and measurement, source and measurement, I interchange it, I should get the same value. So, these two ratio, B1 by I2, B2 is equal to 0, B2 by I1, B1 is equal to 0 in equation 1 and equation 2 should be equal. So, if they are equal, you look at the right hand side of equation 1 and equation 2. You look at the numerator, numerator is always Z12, Z21 minus Z11, Z22. But for the equation 1, denominator is Z21. For the equation 2, denominator is Z12. So from the reciprocity theorem, I know that equation 1 and equation 2 is equal. In that case, what I am getting is Z12 is equal to Z21. So it means that transfer impedance from port 1 to port 2 should be equal to transfer impedance from port 2 to port 1. This is the first observation we are getting from the circuit way of explaining the reciprocity theorem. We can have another observation. Look at the left hand side of the equation 1 and equation 2. 
if b1 and b2 is equal what will happen to i1 and i2 since equation 1 and equation 2 is equal if b1 and b2 in which are the left hand side of the equation 1 and equation 2 is equal which are the numerator b1 b2 is equal for equation 1 in the left hand side denominator i1 also should be equal to i2 so this is another observation we have from the reciprocity theorem for a two port device z12 should be equal to z21 when b1 is equal to b2 i2 should be equal to i1 i2 and i1 are the source circuit current at port 2 and port 1 so this is actually sufficient for this course in order to understand the reciprocity theorem you can also derive reciprocity theorem from the fields and if you are interested you can always refer to the references i mentioned before uh, Thank you.